Welcome to our webinar of the month. Today we are talking about chat GPT, and this is going to be a overview of the AI program that I'm sure you've heard about. That's probably one reason that a lot of you all are here, is that you may have heard about it, but not are not sure quite how to use it. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We actually have a full-blown training that we're going to let you have access to that, that you'll be able to get as well that we'll talk about at the end. So this is uh, Maria Martin. She's my co-host for the podcast, Designer Discussion. She's a pro at chat, GPT, if, if I would say so myself. because She's been using this ever since uh, last year. I, she was letting me and Miriam, who's also one of the co-hosts of the podcast, she was letting us know about the AI chat, GPT, and all of this. And to be honest, I was not really listening to I, I was listening, but I was not really taking it into effect until January of this year where it was everywhere. I started to see it on TV. It was on Nightline. They had it on CNN. They were talking about AI, all these programs that were going to take over. And I was like, Maria, isn't this the program that you were saying? She's like, yes, it is. So, <laughs> so that's when I had started to really learn more about it. So I wanted to have Maria on so we could talk about chat GPT. And like I said, we had did a full-blown training that we'll tell y'all about towards the end that you can get access to. So Maria, nice to have you here today. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for the introduction. I do think I was using it in like maybe November because I think it okay. came out in November. So it might have seemed like a long time just because I was uh, constantly telling you that you should try it out and um, see how we could use it for so many things. And so today we're going to talk about how this can really change your business and make things so much easier on you. Um, I'm sure some of y'all have worked on website copywriting, a press release, written your own bio um, for like an awards event. You know, if you want to apply for an award, you got to write all the copy that just really sells your project and what you're doing. So we're going to talk about how you could be doing that yourself without all the back and forth and much quicker than if you hired someone else and you can do it for free. So um, we're going to go over that today. All right. So Jason, slide two for me. So heading over to slide two, this is about understanding what chat GPT is. And I'm going to let Maria, you know, explain a little bit about her understanding of it and then you know, the benefits of it, since she had to educate us on <laughs> a lot of this as well. In general, it is going to be able to generate a human-like response, and it does have a ton of potential on how to help you with a kitchen and bath, showroom, business, um, an interior design business, your home remodeler. This is such a great thing because it has a lot of benefits for you. It will actually enhance your customer engagement on your social media, your websites, all that stuff. It can help you with design, like copywriting, um, inspiration. And it will also give you feedback and advice if you're missing something. And it will resource and research information to quickly give you generated information that you will need in your business. And it just saves you so much time and it's gonna save you money. So I asked chat GPT, I said, hey chat, what are you, right? So its response to me was chat GPT is a cutting edge technology known as a language model. It uses artificial intelligence to generate human-like responses to text-based prompts. It has been trained on vast amount of data from the internet, and it can understand and generate text in a conversational manner. Essentially, chat GPT is a tool that can simulate conversation and provide helpful responses based on information that it has learned. Okay. So if you're wondering what kind of responses you can get from chat by asking it questions or having it fill out something for you, um, this is a perfectly good example of the communication style that you're going to get from this program. And if you understand how to ask the right questions and tell it the format you want the response in, you can get exactly what you want out of it. But if you, just like an assistant, if you don't tell it exactly what you want, it's not going to learn you enough um, to do the stuff without 
proper instruction from you, but I'm going to teach y'all uh, later on on how to use the right level of instruction and how to structure your request so that when you get a response, it's perfect and you're not having to go back and forth. And all you have to do is just humanize it. So next and slide. That That's actually, you know, the perfect analogy when you had talked about because a lot of times when we hire a new employee or when we work with somebody, we just assume they know everything and we just let, and, and if we don't really explain to them our policies and procedures and how we work, then they're lost. It's the same thing here with chat GPT. If you don't really have it understand how you work, it's going to be hard for it to give you a response that is helpful to you. All right. So slide four, it will create a human like response want you to understand is that this is like having a research assistant that also maybe has been an interior designer at one point in their life and possibly has a law degree. Um, so when you are asking it questions, it's researching the information for you. It can um, help you make sure that it's structured well. So this is also like having an English professor read everything that you're putting out there. And it's also like having a copywriter because copywriters are more about like your messaging and structuring things in a way they're compelling, right? So you're ha you have all of that at your fingertips with these prompts and questions that you ask. And so what it's going to do is it's going to generate for you relevant content based on really good questions. Number two, it does have parameters. Um, what it is going to do is tell you what you want. This is no different than training Google when you're online through your previous searches what your next search is to make sure it aligns with what your historical data is. So what AI is going to do is take historical data from you that you've been asking about or um, talking about. So say I want to write a book on why hamsters are great pets, right? So if I'm writing a book on why hamsters are great pets and I'm asking it questions about like uh, how, how are, you know, how do hamsters, um, you know, eat? What, what are its best foods? How do you care for it? So if I'm asking it historical data about hamsters, and then I ask it the question, what animals make great pets? It's going to take what a normal person would respond with dogs, cats, horses, you know, guinea pigs, whatever. And it's going to move that hamster's comment up in there and it's going to make sure it's pretty high up and it's going to make sure that hamster is included in that list. So does that mean it's wrong? Technically, it just wants to play into your biases and um, what you need and what you want to hear. So um, it is going to be wrong sometimes. And as long as you're aware of that and you know to research stuff and, and double check some things, then you will not have an issue using it. But I just like to mention that it can be wrong um, and that you shouldn't take everything it says to be right. And it also has that as a disclaimer when you start using the program. The data is going to be limited up to 2021, but you're talking about everything on the internet. So when you ask it to do one thing, it looks at everything on the internet that's relevant or similar to what you asked about and then kind of summarizes it and delivers it to you. And number three, this is the biggest thing um, about chat GPT that I cannot, I cannot influence enough for everyone. Chat GPT can have a conversation with you about your client and it will give you new angles on situations. So chat is this removed, emotionally unattached tool that you can reach out to and ask it probing questions and get some responses. So one thing you might do is say, okay, um, I personally am remodeling kitchens and um, I want to get a more luxury clientele. You can ask it questions like, who are the type of people who want to remodel a kitchen, but they want to spend a lot of money and they want to have the nicest things possible? And then what happens is it'll say back to you information and data 
that it believes that person would be like. And then, so what happens is you can say, okay, um, this is something I have written on my website. What can I do to make this paragraph appeal more to that person and be more compelling and has a call to action in it? And it will rewrite something that you've had on your website for five years and make it so salesy, but it's going to feel like smooth as silk. And when you realize it can do that stuff for your business and you don't have to go back and forth with a copywriter, you don't have to pay the copywriter, you don't have to worry about um, if it's got grammatical errors and things, you can kind of just knock it out, look at it, change up some words, do some things to make it sound more like your voice. And you have this information done and there's no back and forth with another human being. I mean, they, it prints out so fast. I can't even type that fast. Okay. So it will act as a sounding board for you to explore different ideas, ask probing questions, and it will also give you alternative viewpoints that maybe you haven't even considered in the beginning. And so just those three things, it'll act like your research assistant, it, can, it will play into your biases, and then it can give you this new perspective on your client that you want to attract and give you the tools to get there. So how does this all of a sudden become your assistant, right? How can this help your business, right? So number one, it, it totally can help you do research. So you can say something like, what are five topics that I should talk about on my blog for my type of business, right? You, you do have to train it and talk about your business and talk about your ideal client and, um, and then it will take and meld those two things together to create um, a list of things for you, right? So you can just brainstorm. Brainstorm um, topics that I can uh, send email newsletters about. Can you help me find, and then you can just put that information out there, right? So maybe you're wanting to write a blog post on the importance of a different uh, paint finish or how paint finishes are made, you can just ask it and it'll give you information on, on, that, on that. And then you can build on that. You can do your own research. It will work as a think um, as you go marketing advisor, right? So as you are spending time uh, working on something that you're gonna put out there on social media, um, you can ask it questions about what can you do to make this more compelling? How can you make this more persuasive? How can this talk more to my ideal client? Like what, I mean, you could ask it, write a poem, write, <laughs> write a, uh, um, make a joke that my ideal client would find um, good, you know, or funny. And, and it will give you some ideas. It'll give you a, a couple of ideas. So it will constantly be, helping you to understand a little bit more about your business and, um, and how, how you're talking to your clients. So then number three, that ties into dig into your messaging. So if you are um, noticing you're getting the same kind of client over and over and over again, and they are not the type of person that you hope to have in the future, you can really Ask it to work on your messaging to target more of the type of person that you want, the type of quality of project you want. Um, like I showed Jason, and we have this in the second portion of this presentation, but I took a generic um, interior design bio, and here's an example here. So a Generic interior design bio, because all interior design bios are the same, is welcome to my company where exquisite interiors come to life. With a passion for design and unwavering commitment to craftsmanship, we create captivating spaces that inspire and transform. Led by designer's name, our team is, a talent, is talented designers bringing together creativity, expertise, and a keen eye to detail, personalizing environments that reflect on your style and aspirations. Whether it's a luxurious residence, a stylish office, or a charming retail space, we believe in the power of design to enhance the way you live, work, and connect. So you can just, that sounds like a great bio. It seems like it's a good bio. But honestly, it's not branded enough. It's, it's not interesting enough 
for a specific group of people that it would seem like you were talking to the needs of their heart. And so we, we have your ideal client avatar as one of the downloads on our website that I would encourage everyone to get and work through it. And you can use chat to work through it with you. And it will give you messaging advice, marketing advice, and it'll do additional research for you to help get things better. So when we are talking about your client's experience and you have this bio, it really doesn't speak to the heart of someone who is very specific in their taste and very specific in their quality and, and very specific in how they want to achieve it. So if I was to take this basic bio and ask it um, to write it more client focused, so it's not about me, right? But it's about how I help my ideal client and I tell it where I live. So we're gonna use keywords Keywords are going to be where I service, and I'm going to talk about interior design. I'm going to talk about like an aesthetic style that I work within, and then I'm going to talk more about who the client is and what their needs are and why they um, need to hire an interior designer. And this is where your avatar packet will um, play into this. So your bio is going to say more like, Welcome to our company where your dream home takes shape with a burst of creativity and a touch of modern flair. We're thrilled to offer you a full service interior design experience right here in the vibrant city of at your company at, well, actually at whatever the design firm is. We believe that homes are more than just a space. They're a reflection of your unique personality and the spirit of your family. We specialize in creating interiors that embrace your creative, colorful essence, infusing every room with warmth, charm, and a modern twist on traditional design. Imagine stepping into a home that is pet and family friendly, where those spaces connect, uh, where those spaces coexist harmoniously, tailoring your, to your lifestyle and all of your needs. Our talented design team is passionate about crafting interior, uh, inviting environments that will seamlessly blend style and functionality from a playroom that ignites the imagination to an elegant living area perfect for hosting gatherings. We ensure that your home is a haven for both you and your loved ones and a furry friend. So you can just sort of see how by taking your information that you think is good enough and then asking it to really dive in and dig into the heart of the person reading it, you get these more beautiful, more compelling conversations. And one of the things that you can do is really take your biases and your blind spots and dig into them to see how you can do things better. And this sounds more like a professionally copywritten bio versus the first one, which is a generic one that most people have on their website. Another thing that's really great to help uh, improve your client experience is that you can ask it to write your emails for you. You can have pre-formatted emails written for each one of the steps during your design process. And all you have to do is change out a couple of things, you know, um, for, you know, client so-and-so and task whatever. We're ready for your presentation appointment. Please check here so we can schedule it. What times work for you, right? So you can take and have those emails pre-generated. Well, how does that really help when it's just a basic email? Honestly, this is where you can write those nasty responses you want to write and make them beautifully um, scripted kind responses. Things like the price is the price, right? Instead of responding to someone who's asking for a reduced price or a change, you don't have to say, well, the price is the price. You can say something along the lines where you say, hey, can you explain to my client how um, my services are attached to the price that I deliver to my clients. And I don't like to compromise on the quality of my service. And that is uh, attached to the price. And because of that, I don't want to compromise 
what I can provide you, I um, and, and we won't be able to reduce our price, right? So instead of those emails that would agitate and create anxiety and seem like they would take forever to write, you can pre-write those. You already know you're going to get that question. You're already going to get the email about, I want to see all your invoices. You can pre-write all that through chat or ask chat to do it when you need it and get a more... Um, emotionally unattached response to it. And it's kind of nice because every time you have to write one of those emotionally disturbing um, emails, you typically want to bounce it off one other person. And if you're working at the office all by yourself and you just want to get it knocked out, this is usually the way to do it. Ask it to create catchy email titles for your emails that go out. Ask it to compose your blog outlines. Rewrite updates for your blogs, which Jason tells us all the time. All you have to do is update a blog, and it's just like having a freshly new written one. So just having updates made for your blog post, your previous blog post, help boost that SEO on your website. You can um, ask it to help you create a newsletter content that would appeal to your ideal client. It'll ask, um, you know, what are some common questions that um, I should be asking my clients or common questions that my client is going to be asking me, and then just get those written down. So you just always have like, what is that? What is your corporate policy on? So you can sit down and just say, look, with everyone in our office, this is our response to this question. Um, one thing I also like is that you can um, brainstorm what are some social media content things that would um, appeal to my ideal client. And you can dig into that avatar workbook that we talked about. Um, and then also just ask it, you know, what are some content calendar style um, topics I should be talking about? And the importance of the Explore Your Avatar considering it as a free download off of our website it is worth its weight in gold because what it does is it helps you to dig in a little bit deeper into your ideal client and allow you to talk to them so crystal clear so well that they are like they can smell the cigar being um you know tasted with a really good expensive glass of wine on their outdoor patio when they before they hire you right? And so um, you want to know your avatar so closely and, um, you know, be so intertwined with what they're thinking that you are answering their questions without them realizing that um, they had to ask them of you, right? So if they're looking at something that you're marketing um, or you've put out on social media, maybe the question that was sitting with them that they weren't thinking to ask was, you know, why are so many people using wallpaper? I thought the white kitchen was so important, right? And as you find that people, um, their, their thoughts and what they need from design are going to be changing, you can start to lean into this, looking at your ideal client and then talking to them more like, we love a white kitchen. It is bright and crisp and it makes a, a whole house feel lighter and brighter, but we have five other paint colors that do the same thing without feeling like appliance white. You can um, just sort of learn who your ideal client is on a deeper, more pressing level so that you understand what's their next question. What's their next question? So how does this benefit you? So your, uh, your customer engagement through social media will be better. It just is because you're going to be talking to them in a different way. You can um, create more personalized responses to your clients' questions, and you will begin to engage with potential clients through website content and social media content that is more accurate and more compelling for your ideal client. And your design inspiration and advice that you're giving is going to be more fine-tuned for them because when you ask chat to brainstorm and generate the creative ideas with you, alongside you, talking about these specific people, you will be able to feel freed up because you're not going to have that emotional tie to how people are going to respond to you. It'll also throw in that great call to action at the end of it to get people to respond to what it is that you're asking of them. And it'll put it in in a way that's kind of seamless. And it doesn't feel like you're asking for a lot. It just sort of 
will help you put those perfect call to actions together that make your client feel heard, which is great. I mean, who doesn't want to have an excellent copywriter on your team? So uh, this is, it works so fast, you won't believe it, okay? You can ask it, what are common media publication topics that are talking about, uh, that magazines are writing about? Um, what are some industry trends that, uh, you know, people are talking about? It cannot predict the future, so you can't ask it to, um, what are some interior design trends, right, that, are, that you see over the next couple of years? It's never going to be able to answer that question. It cannot predict the future. It's pulling from old information. But you can ask it, what are some industry trends that were popular in whatever year? What are some industry trends that um, people were asking about this, you know, this year, last year, um, whatever year it's up to date to? Um, and, and then that gives you a basis to start to work off of. Um, you can ask for media material suggestions. So if you want to write an article for a magazine, you can just kind of start uh, building on that information by having that previous data for you. And um, like I said, it's just, it's on demand. You can keep up with some of the latest marketing concepts really for your design business. Um, and it just does it all for you. It's just great. So um this is going to create that time saving and productivity that we are all looking for, right? There's no more, there's no extra hours in the day. We, we need to have all this stuff done. We either have to come up with new hours of the day, which is our Saturdays and Sundays, or we have to pay someone else to do this stuff. And then we're spending a whole lot of time back and forth, back and forth training someone to be able to do this stuff for you. Um, and this will just help create those things. You can have them in place. You um, no longer have to write every email from scratch. You know, you can have easy automated responses to those common questions because you already know that they're going to come. And, um, you know, you can have it help fix some stuff that you know you have in your business. Like a lot of people are going to um, have like a design questionnaire where you ask all the right questions before you take on someone as a client. You can just talk to it and say, hey, you know, my last four clients had an issue with this. How can I explain to my clients that things that are handmade, things that age in a way where there's a analogy that helps them to understand it better? And it will say something like, those Carrera marble countertops are going to age with time and get more beautiful, just like we do as humans. And just because we've aged a little bit doesn't mean we're less valuable, right? So you can start to ask those kinds of questions. And once again, have these like ready to go responses to things, stuff you can talk about on your website so that people are real clear on how you feel about it. And it won't be something that you're having to come up with off the cuff. There'll be things you already have a plan for. And there's nothing better than being proactive about stuff than having to be reactive about it. So I would love for you to join us um, in the paid version of how to use ChatGPT. You would save thousands of dollars in copywriting. You will learn how to make chat understand your business so well that you will generate clients just from the way that you change the way you talk to people. We have, you know, all of this already put together for you. There's a video training on how to use it. And there's a workbook that takes you through all of the steps that you need to get the results that are the best for you. And then Jason, I don't know if you have any other questions. And no, and what, what we have on here now is just talks a little bit about uh, the Design Discussions podcast, which some of you may or may not know about, but we do have a podcast that comes out once every other week. Uh, we've been doing it for almost two years now. It, it, you know, time flies. So we have roughly 90 something episodes. We're about to come up on episode 100 soon. And one of the reasons we had created the marketing studio is because a lot of our listeners ask for a lot of done for you resources. And so that was the reason that we created it. And there's a lot of information in there. Like we talk about the client avatar workbook. That's a free download because that's one that we feel every business owner should 
know who their avatar is so they can adequately communicate with them the right way. And then a lot of the other resources flow from that. So there's a lot in there. Take a look. We had did a training like Maria just talked about. We did an hour long training that has a workbook in it that goes into depth on how to get the right information out to help you save time and energy. So that's just what I want to say. And I'm going to actually open it up for questions now to see if anybody has, has any questions. Did you want to add anything while they're asking yes, it? There was one other thing. Um, if you are curious about streamlining your design processes, we have a list of 59 emails. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is a process sequence. It helps you to look at each one of those 59 email types that you would be sending out of your business and really look at them and say, hey, is this part of my process? And is it that easy to call out every step of communication with my clients? And having that type of data and information for your business is huge. Um, it would cut out, you know, um, when you have a new person in your office or additional staff, everybody is consistent in what they're doing. And as you go through one project and everything is seamless, then project two becomes more seamless. And then three, you iterate, make a couple of changes, and then you can really start to create a more marketable design business for your clients. Okay. One of the questions that was asked is how do we get there? And I'll just uh, show you here. It's an actual URL for the marketing studios, designer discussions, marketing.studio. And so this is it right here. You'll find all of the information here. You'll find if you head in the store or about, you'll see all of the resources we have here. Some of them are free. Like I said, the client avatar client here, this is something we believe everybody should have because this is something that we worked on and really take you step by step on how to create that avatar and understand who they are so you can communicate to them effectively. So that's how you get to that resource. Okay. So I want yeah, to share we that. also have uh, one more free um, item on the marketing studio that I think is also super valuable to anyone that has a business is it talks about website SEO from a blog standpoint. Like mm-hmm. if you are blogging, your blog might be wrong and it's not even um able to be found on the internet. So um, if you are putting that time and that effort into putting a blog together just to beef up your website, we put in there a how to blog with a knowledge of SEO. And then you think, why is that so important for my business? Well, when we bring on brands that want to have brand partnerships with interior designers, The number one thing that they repeat over and over and over again is that they go to the designer's website and realize they don't understand SEO and then Mm -hmm. decide not to work with them. And I was like, oh my gosh, they can just look at our websites and our blogs and realize we don't understand enough about SEO that we can produce a high quality blog post to help advertise their product. And so um, we went ahead and made a full encompassing how to do blog SEO um, to help beef up your website, but then also um, open you up to the opportunity to have relationships with brand partnerships um, by having that knowledge and proof of it on your website. Like I said, you can head to designer discussions, marketing.studio to get to all of the products that we had talked about here today. And then if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us at designer discussions at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out to us there. And that was it for today. And uh, we hope to see you all here next month on the webinar of the month. All right. Have a good day.